Hey everybody, today's topic is one I'm super excited to talk about. What would happen if Magic the Gathering added a sixth color? Before we jump into it, let's start off with a little background. Magic the Gathering is a trading card game. Actually, the very first trading card game, and was originally released in 1993. In this game, players take on the role of a powerful wizard called a Planeswalker, which can travel throughout the multiverse, casting powerful spells and summoning creatures. From a gameplay perspective, players are going to be opening randomized packs of cards to build their decks, and then using these decks to battle their opponents. The goal of the game is to take your opponent's life from 20 down to 0. This game has been around for over 25 years now, and is still incredibly popular, with millions of players around the world. From a game design perspective, Magic is a very impressive game. It has a wide variety of different ways to play, and it has held players' attention for two and a half decades. While there are many reasons for Magic's success over the years, one of the most important and powerful ideas that underpins the entire game is a concept known as the color pie. Basically, every card in Magic is one or more of these five colors. White, blue, black, red, and green. Each of these colors represents a different type of magic and requires a different type of magical energy, called mana, in order to play. Each color has its own identity, both from a philosophical and a gameplay standpoint, and each color has its own strengths and weaknesses. Because different colors require different types of mana in order to play, it creates an interesting type of tension in the gameplay. Because each color is limited in the types of things that it can do, this incentivizes players to play more colors to cover the weaknesses. However, because each color requires different types of mana, you're also pushed to play fewer colors to guarantee that you actually have the mana to play the cards you want to play. This system is at the core of Magic's design, and ever since it was first released it's always had the same five colors. However, there have always been rumors about the possibility of adding a sixth color. While Magic has never added another color in the past, it does beg the question. What would happen if Magic did add a sixth color? Would it add new layers of complexity to the game? Or would it crumble the very foundation of what makes Magic successful? Let's find out. Before we can figure out what adding a sixth color would do to the color pie, we should first dig a little deeper into how the current color pie works. Let's start by getting to know the five colors. First up is white, the color of community, structure, and order. White believes in equality and fairness, and believes that every creature should be protected and taken care of. White draws its power from the planes, and can commonly be found casting spells that include gaining life, protecting its creatures, and removing threats that don't fit its idea of the perfect community. Common examples of white creatures include humans and angels. Next is blue, the color of knowledge and ambition. Blue cares about learning and self-improvement, and believes that anybody can become anything they want to be with hard work and dedication. Blue mana comes from islands, and examples of blue spells include card drawing and countering your opponent's spells. Popular blue creatures include sphinxes and merfolk. Third is black a very self-centered and manipulative color that is willing to do whatever it takes to achieve its goals. Black believes that the only person that has your best interests in heart is you, and therefore everybody should look out only for themselves. Black draws its strength from the swamp, and examples of black cards include forcing your opponent to discard their cards, draining life from your opponent, and destroying your opponent's creatures. Common examples of black creatures include zombies and demons. The next color is red, the color of emotion and impulse. Red does what red wants, and would rather act first and think later. Red power comes from the mountains, and in battle, red is best known for their direct damage spells, random effects, and for gathering short-term advantages. Popular red creatures include goblins and dragons. The last color is green, the color of nature and harmony. Green believes that everything has a place and that true happiness comes from following the natural order. Green mana is embodied in forests, and green can commonly be found making its creatures larger, gathering more mana, and destroying unnatural things, such as artifacts or enchantments. Common green creatures include beasts and hydras. Oof, that was a lot. However, 
understanding the colors that already exist is necessary so that we can better understand what would happen if we added a sixth color. Specifically, in addition to actually choosing a new color, we would need to come up with a new basic land to support it, a new philosophical identity to underpin it, and a new mechanical identity that doesn't step on the toes of the already existing colors. The idea of a sixth color goes all the way back to the February 1997 issue of a magazine called Inquest, which at the time was a very popular magazine focusing on trading card games. In this issue, there was a prank article which appeared to show a number of brand new Magic the Gathering cards in a never-before-seen color. Purple. According to this article, the basic land for purple was going to be the portal, and many of the cards had an interesting mix of abilities that seemed to be mostly connected to blue and artifact abilities with a more black-inspired art style. Even though this article was just a prank, purple has now become ubiquitous when talking about the mythical six Magic the Gathering color. While there's no guarantee that a six color would have to be purple, could be gray, brown, orange, yellow, pink, or any other color, for the rest of this video I'm going to be using the terms sixth color and purple interchangeably. Purple seems like a good option because, aside from one small exception, purple currently has no meaning in Magic the Gathering. Old artifacts used to use a brown frame, and current artifacts use a gray frame, which makes these colors unlikely choices. Multicolor cards have a gold frame, which could be confusing for yellow or orange. Purple is a very common color, and would be easy to distinguish from all of the currently existing frames. In fact, this connection between a hypothetical sixth color and the color purple is so strong that in the one instance where Magic the Gathering actually considered adding a sixth color, back in the development of Planar Chaos in 2005, purple was actually the color that they chose to use. Yes, there actually was a point in time where Magic considered adding a sixth color. Planar Chaos is the second set in a group of sets known as the Time Spiral Block. This block takes place on basically an apocalypse on the magic plane of Dominaria. Time is unraveling and potentially the entire multiverse is in danger. These sets had a very strong time theme and each set in the block was set after a different period of time. The past, the present, and the future. To show this theme of time, each set had a set of time shifted cards which were meant to represent cards from a different time. The first set, Time Spiral, represented the past, and had time-shifted cards from previous Magic the Gathering sets. The third set, Future Sight, had a future-shifted set of cards, which were cards with experimental mechanics that were meant to show potential futures. The second set, Planar Chaos, was meant to represent the present. But how do you represent the present in a trading card game set? The solution was to represent an alternative present, Basically, an alternate universe of Magic the Gathering. One way to do this was to represent the game as it could have evolved, but didn't. An alternative path that was equally likely, but different from how the game actually ended up. The solution they ended up going with was to release a series of color-shifted cards. Cards from previous Magic the Gathering sets, but in a different color that they wouldn't normally be printed in. While this decision is still causing headaches for the design team for all the color pie issues that it caused, during design they actually considered a much more radical approach. One possibility that they considered for Planar Chaos was to do a sixth color just for that set. After all, it's entirely possible that Magic could have ended up with six colors instead of the five that it currently has. The idea behind adding purple in Planar Chaos specifically was that because it represented an alternate reality, players wouldn't expect purple to be an ongoing thing going forward. Once you're out of this particular set, you would expect things to go back to normal and go back to the normal five colors. The first question that has to be answered when you're considering adding a new color to the color pie is, where do you put it? You see, the color pie is not just a collection of individual colors, but it actually defines the relationships between the colors. Each color has two neighbors that are its allies, and two other colors across from it that represent its enemies. By adding a sixth color, you're going to completely change the relationships between the existing five colors, and this could totally skew the color pie. 
Much like the Inquest article before it, the designers of Planar Chaos decided to place purple between blue and black. This decision has ripple effects that totally change the relationships between the rest of the colors. Because purple is now allies with blue and black, those two colors are no longer allies with each other. In addition, blue and green are no longer enemies of one another, but purple and green are. In fact, instead of having each color having two allies and two enemies, the new arrangement would have each color have two allies, the colors next to it, two neutral colors, the colors one space away, and one enemy, the color that's directly across from it. Because each color now only has one enemy, this arrangement would likely cause a much stronger focus on the enemy conflicts. These would be red and blue, white and black, and purple and green. Speaking of color pairs, this arrangement would completely change the number of color combinations that a player has to work with. Currently, there are 10 two-color combinations, the Ravnica guilds, there are 10 three-color combinations, the Alara shards and the Tarkir clans, and there are five four-color combinations. If you add a sixth color, this completely changes the math. Adding a sixth color would now result in 15 two-color combinations, 20 three-color combinations, and 15 four-color combinations. Since magic sets tend to have built-in strategies for each color pair, this would dramatically complicate the design of the set. This would also have a dramatic effect on deck building. In magic, there are two main ways to play, constructed and limited. In a constructed format, players are allowed to build their decks ahead of time using any cards that are legal in that format. In a limited format, on the other hand, players are required to build their decks basically on the spot using a limited supply of cards that are provided for them. Adding a six color would have dramatic implications for both of these types of formats. From a constructed standpoint, purple would have a difficult time, at least at first. While people would be interested in what the new color can do, it would be difficult to justify playing a purple deck competitively because your options are just going to be so much more limited. While Magic has been changing the way they release standard sets for a while now over the past couple years, I believe that under the current system, all of the other colors would have five or six sets for players to choose from, whereas purple would only have one set worth of cards to play, at least at first. Not only would it only have one set worth of cards, but it actually gets a smaller slice of that set. Because magic sets tend to be evenly balanced between all five colors, each color gets around one-fifth of the set. If you add a sixth color, this means that now each color is only getting one-sixth of the set. With such a limited card pool, it would be difficult for purple to compete, at least for the first couple of years. If your plan is to only release purple for one set, as it was in Planar Chaos, then this situation gets even worse. Of course, there are ways to counteract some of these effects. One of the easiest ways to incentivize people to play your new color is to make it more powerful. However, this strategy is dangerous since it risks warping the entire competitive landscape around a single color. If purple is both the new and exciting thing, and the most powerful thing, then this could lead to an overabundance of purple decks that could be very bad for the competitive magic landscape. Another potential way to introduce a sixth color is that instead of splitting the set evenly, you have a much higher proportion of your new color. This could avoid making purple overpowered, and would give purple deck builders a lot more options to build their purple decks. While all the other colors would be underrepresented for the first couple of sets, if you handle it carefully and slowly adjust the ratios over time, I think this strategy could work for Constructed. Of course, such a strategy would be disastrous for Limited. Suppose that, in order to make it work, you need to make half of the colored cards in your set purple. This means that, in Limited, 50% of your deck building resources are purple cards. This would pretty much guarantee that everyone has at least some purple in their limited decks. Of course, even if you did make the ratio of each color in the set even, this still would have some effect on limited gameplay. Because you now have to deal with 5 colors instead of 6, each color makes up a smaller portion of your resources, which would make it more difficult to make a 2 color deck. This would probably require more players to play a 3 color deck instead, and the set would have to be designed with this in mind. All of these consequences would occur before we even define what the new color is. Although we've been using purple for this example, these consequences would happen regardless of what the new color was or where you placed it in the color pie. 
However, if we were actually adding a sixth color, we couldn't stop here. We would have to actually define what the color was, what it can do, and what it stands for. For now, we'll stick with using the color purple placed between blue and black. However, we still have to define what this color actually does. In his article, The Color Purple, by Paul Sotosanti? Sotosanti. 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 Paul Sotosanti. Sotosanti. Paul S. breaks down a few of the possibilities. One possibility would be to make purple a jack of all trades, being able to do pretty much anything, but not be the best at anything. However, this possibility would make purple seem weak, since even if the color itself was very versatile, each of the individual cards would seem underpowered. The second possibility would be to give it a bunch of random abilities that none of the other colors are really using. However, the problems with this possibility are twofold. First, Magic has been around for over 25 years, and in that time they've made a lot of cards. There simply aren't that many abilities that aren't being used, and if there are, those abilities are probably not being used for a reason. Second, even if it were possible to come up with enough abilities to fill out an entirely new color, there's no way that those abilities would be cohesive enough to feel like they belong together. The third possibility would be to completely reshape the color pie with the addition of purple and rearrange what abilities each color has access to based on their new philosophies. This could work, but it would have numerous side effects. Depending on what the new philosophies are for each color, there would probably be numerous older cards from each color that are no longer in their slice of the color pie. While this is already true because the color pie slowly changes over time and a lot of older cards are outdated for the current pie, there's never been such a big shift all at once, except ironically during Planar Chaos. Finally, the fourth possibility that was discussed during Planar Chaos development was to give purple an identity that was related to time and give it a bunch of time manipulation abilities. While it may seem like this identity could only work in a time-based set like Planar Chaos, I actually don't think this is the case. The addition of a sixth color would always be a major change to Magic the Gathering, and would require some sort of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey explanation, no matter how it's done. I also think that this possibility would give purple a strong identity without eating into the other five colors. Due to all of the constraints that adding a new color would bring for just one set, eventually the idea to add purple in Planar Chaos was dropped. However, there are still numerous ways that a sixth color could be added to magic. I firmly believe that it will never add a sixth color to standard legal magic, not only because of all the development issues that we've already mentioned, but because of the one thing that magic will never ever change the card back. Magic's card back has remained exactly the same ever since the release of the first set, Alpha, in 1993. This card back features the Magic the Gathering logo, the color pie, and the Deckmaster logo. The Magic logo is out of date, Deckmaster is a brand that no longer really exists, and there's even actually an accidental pen mark that can be found on the back of every Magic the Gathering card. Adding a six color would likely require them to change the Magic card back to reflect the new color pie. However, this seems extremely unlikely given their reluctance to change it in the past. Although it's possible that they could just be stubborn and let everything on the back of the card be outdated. However, even if it would never happen in a tournament legal Magic the Gathering set, there are still other ways that a sixth color could be implemented. One way is through a supplemental set that is only legal to be played with other cards from that set. In the past, Magic has released several supplemental sets that added brand new types of cards to the game, such as Vanguards, Schemes, Planes, and Phenomena cards. Some of these cards, such as the Arch Enemy Schemes, do have different backs than normal Magic the Gathering cards. This leaves the addition of a sixth color a possibility, even if it is only temporary. The second place that a new color could be added is actually the place where new colors already exist, a silver-bordered unset. The unsets are a series of comedic Magic the Gathering sets with jokes, references, and weird mechanics that could never be done in a normal Magic the Gathering set. And lo and behold, these unsets actually already contain cards that reference colors outside of the normal five. The first of these was a card called Water Gun Balloon Game, which allows players to create a giant pink teddy bear token. Another card, called Avatar of Me, has a color that is equal to the player's eye color, 
This opens up the possibility for new colors such as hazel, gray, or brown. Finally, a card called Sword of Dungeons and Dragons from the most recent unset allows players to create a gold dragon token. It's entirely possible that there could be more uncards that reference these colors out of the ordinary, and a future unset could even have a larger focus on these unusual colors. However, for now, this is all just hypothetical, and clearly adding a sixth color to Magic the Gathering is not as simple as it may once have seemed. For now, we'll just have to wait and see. However, this brings us to our question of the day. What Magic the Gathering colors are you? What color or combination of colors best represents your personality? Personally, I think I would be white, blue, and black. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more game design talk every two weeks. If you want to see more, check out my other videos, and I have over a hundred articles posted on the Rempton Games blog. And join me next time where I'll be taking a look at dungeon design in Ocarina of Time. See you then.